Hello my loves, welcome back to another reading vlog. So, a couple months ago I did a video where I had book recommendation app picks what I read and you guys really loved that video, you had a lot of fun with me being in no control over what I was reading. Anyway, so I'm in control but I'm out of control and I'm also um controlled. So in a way I'm everything. <laughs> so we're gonna do it again. I'm gonna work with Novelic again, which is a book recommendation app. And I think there's so much fun to be had, so many fun things to do and explore. But I thought I wanted something different this month, this time. I realized it's Pride Month. So we're gonna be picking books or Novelic is gonna be picking books through like an LGBTQ queer lens essentially. And I am just so excited. I've never really done like a specific Pride Month vlog. So I'm really excited to be reading queer books this week and having no control <laughs> over what I read and giving all of the control to Novelix. So we're gonna read two books in this vlog. One of them is gonna be the book club. I'm gonna rerun my book club on there, but I'm not gonna, you know, we're gonna pick that in a fun way. And then the other one, I think I'll use the Ask the Community section again, because I love that section so much last time and so many of you have loved it when you've gone and tried it out. So I think we'll do that. Novelix are very kindly sponsoring this video once again, which is so, so kind of them. I love working with them. These vlogs are so much fun. <laughs> So let's go use, I think we're gonna use the collections part of the app where you get book recommendations from collections of genres. I think we're gonna use that to pick what our book club book is gonna be this time. So it is time to figure out what our options for our book club poll are gonna be. So for this, we're gonna have the book club again. I'm going to the books section, browse your personal bookstores. This is like a recommendation section where you get recommended 12 books and there's lots of different categories. There's kind of the main genres and then there's kind of like more thematic options and they have an LGBTQ option. So we're gonna go on this <laughs> and I'm gonna pick three, I think, of the books on there and I'm gonna put it to a vote. Basically, the way that this section of the app works is I'll only give you 12 recommendations at a time. But because for this poll, I wanna post an Instagram picture, we can see the book options that we've got. Um, and I, I kind of wanna try at the moment to read the books I have. I have about 220 unread owned books. What we're gonna do is we're gonna keep clicking on the tab until we have three books that have come up that are on my physical TBR, essentially. So you might have to click a few times, it might happen once. Okay, I've read Symmetry Boys and, Some and Cinderella is Dead. None on that page that are on my TBR. Next. Nope. Nope, none on that page that are on my TBR. We're just gonna keep loading it until we add up, add up to three. Okay. Now, <laughs> this isn't on my physical TBR, but my mum has it next door and I've never really been intrigued about reading it. But I guess I should put that as an option because it literally is on my mum's bookshelf and I see it like every day next door. So I don't know what it's about. I feel like it's like a literary fiction. Interesting, it does sound interesting. Okay, we'll have that as our first one. That will be one, one in the poll. Oh, Wild and Wicked Things, I own that, that's behind me. That would be good because it would mean reading a new release. <laughs> it's literally right here. And I need to read more new releases. So that's two. That's two that are on my physical TBR. Let's see if we get one more. I do wanna read The Girls I've Been, but we're trying to read the books I own physically. God, there's so many good book recommendations, like The Mercies I wanna read, Wild Girls I Loved, but I'm, again, trying to read the books I own physically. Um, the Animals at Lockwood Manor sounds very interesting. Library of the Unwritten. Oh, that's a five star prediction. That's one of my five star predictions I haven't gotten around to yet. Okay, so it's gonna be, is it Love After Love? The uh, Wild and Wicked Things and Library of the Unwritten are gonna be our three options that I'm gonna give for the book club. Fun, okay, I'm gonna go take an Instagram picture of those together and get the poll up and we shall see what wins. Okay, so I posted the poll with the three books and I was kind of hoping between the Library of the Unwritten and Wild and Wicked Things and you guys ended up voting for Library of the Unwritten for the book to read for the book club. Hey. <laughs> Success! I am so happy that this came up on the LGBTQ selection page. I actually don't know how this is queer yet. Um, I need to like, I suppose I'll find it out <laughs> throughout the book. I am actually 100 pages into this. I should be halfway already. <laughs> 
<laughs> through our schedule for the book club, but I'm a little bit behind. I'm 100 pages in and I'm enjoying it so far. So, not my squeaky chair, apologies, but we are following the library of the unwritten books <laughs> and the librarian of that. And basically it's really important that books stay contained and books don't escape the library and heroes don't escape their books. So at the start of this, there is a hero who is kind of like, uh, speaking to his author which is a really really bad thing and the librarian and her assistant go to track down the hero and put him back in his book essentially and there's also this um like nervous demon called Leto who's really really fun who's kind of gone to give them this message there's also this fallen angel that we're following as well from heaven so the library then uh, unwritten is in hell um but it's like a neutral space in hell <laughs> It says. Yeah, that's kind of what we've read so far and that's all the synopsis really says. And I'm just really enjoying it. It reads as like cozy fantasy. It's like funny, cozy fantasy. It reminds me a lot of TJ Klune. I think if you've liked any of his books, I think you would enjoy this. It's getting me engrossed in reading again. That's what we've been waiting for. It's what we wanted all along. Which is a really great thing. I'm really, this is one of my five star predictions. I made my last five star prediction video over a year ago, but there's still books from that video I haven't read. And this is one of them. And I've been waiting until <laughs> I've read them um, to make another one because I want to like react to that and see how I've done. I've kind of like ticked them off once I've done it, but I don't really remember what was on it or how well I've done in terms of predicting five stars. I really like the character of Claire, who's the librarian. I really like the character of Leto, who's the demon. I feel like the first 100 pages has gone really fast. And there's been a lot of world building as to how the world works and the rules of the world and like heaven versus hell and what that really means. I'm pretty sure God is a woman, so we love to see it. <laughs> It's giving, it's giving share. So yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I'm excited to see where the story goes. I feel like we've been given a good basis, a good foundation of the story. And now I'm excited to see where it goes from here. Listen, I'm going to be a reading gal. I'm about to be a reading gal. <laughs> I'm doing reading sprints with uh, Kayla and her channel members and my patrons. So that's helping me get a lot of reading done. Uh, so yeah, I'm hoping I'll get close to the halfway point tonight. But I mean, I also get distracted in reading sprints and just end up talking. So we're gonna try and control that. <laughs> morning i just woke up i'm gonna do my skincare as i talk to you my skincare i just ran out of everything so i've got like nothing and it's all on its way so we're doing a very a very uh also what i'm looking for like reduced skincare routine so i am now on page 280 of uh library of unwritten and i'm still really enjoying it i would say hang on i would say it's a four star for me at the moment. It's not a five star. It is obviously a five star prediction. The one thing, before we get into the good things, the one thing that's keeping it from being a five star is that the, the book can be kind of slow at times. There's moments where I find myself not having grasped something happening. Like I'll have found out that maybe uh, a certain character left the room that the rest of the characters were in and I didn't realize it had happened. So I find myself not quite a, it's a bit slow, and B, sometimes I find myself not quite understanding everything that's happened, but I am really, really enjoying it. I'm having a lot of fun reading it. Something that's really fun is at the start of every chapter, there's like diary sections from past librarians of the Library of the Unwritten, and I just, I love when books do that. It just adds a little bit of spice, you know, like, sorry, this is incredible. It just adds to the world building, the complexity, and do you know what? I never annotate. I'm not an annotating girly. I know. <laughs> Sometimes I wish I was, because I feel like, you know, it does really well, and everyone loves the annotating girlies. I'm not that. But 
this book is the first book in a long time to make me wish that I annotate because there's been some paragraphs that are just so poignant and beautiful and they're like writing is like lyrical and I'm just like oh I'm into it I'm like absorbed into this world so yeah I'm, I'd say the writing the kind of lyricism and the beauty of the writing is one of my favorite things and I love the characters they're on this quest oh they're like LGBT representation has, has arrived <laughs> you know hi gay <laughs> I would say actually as I read the book, I, the whole book is gay. <laughs> you know those books where like every character has a queer outlook on life? I would say it's like one of them. But the more like specific, this is the queer rep that you're getting. Well, I assume there's gonna be more actually. Because, why did I just show you as if I'm like a guru? Yeah, the, the queer rep has arrived and I feel like actually I really shipped who the character is. Do I say who? Should I say who? Yeah, I ship Hero and Leto. So Leto is the young, I need my I need my mirror for this. Okay, Leto's the young demon that arrived to like tell the librarian what was happening, and Hero is the hero from the unwritten book that got out. And I ship them, and I want them to be together, and I just feel like it's gonna happen. And there's such interesting discussions to be had about its like representation of heaven and hell, and the kind of dimensions of heaven and hell, like heaven isn't a very good place <laughs> for the people that work there, like the angels. <laughs> and I just think, someone brought that up in the book club chat and I just thought that was so interesting. It's such an interesting dimension. So yeah, the book's got a lot of interesting stuff to it. Sometimes there are moments where I'm like, I don't know, I'm not like, I'm not vibing, I'm, I'm kind of losing interest, but that's just the nature of books. Like. <laughs> Sometimes I just lose interest. It's not like, you know, a fast paced thriller where oh, my mouth, my finger just went in my mouth, where you're not gonna be able to put the book down regardless of what you think of it. So yeah, I do wanna show you quickly a new feature of the app is that now you can not only like mark books as currently reading, but it more clearly shows on the app. So I thought I would show you here. So go to search for a book library you have I could spell of the unwritten click on that there she is and then I click here and I can mark it as current read and then if we go back here to the main page it's like on the main page so it more clearly you can more clearly see what you're currently reading and then like when you go on a book you can there's links to go buy it here we are links to bookshop it's £8.36 right now so yeah, there's a lot of cool features. You can also mark books as TBR, read, favorite, owned, DNF. And when you go on it, you get the uh, synopses and you also get like a list of the genres, fairy tales and people reading the book. It's cool. Oh my God, you get clubs reading a book and it's my book club. How cute. Okay, I didn't know that. So yeah, that's just like another feature I wanted to show you guys. But anyway, I'm gonna go put my makeup on and watch some YouTube while I do so. And then I'm, I will finish the book today. My guess is I will finish the book. So yes, oh, I am getting to go, I'm going to get my hair done. So I'll try and film some B-roll of that for you. Right, I'm here to get my hair done. <laughs> and I'm just feeling so nervous. Are you comfortable? I'm scared. Are you scared? Yeah, I You should be. I used to dye my hair a lot. I used to get it pink and stuff like that, but I haven't done anything to my hair in a long time. And we're changing multiple things up in terms of cut, in terms of color. So yeah, I'm gonna go to my appointment, but I'm so, I feel so nervous, you guys. I don't know how much I'm gonna film in there because this is a new hairdresser for me. So I don't know if it's like awkward whipping out, whipping out the camera. <laughs> but if I can film anything of the process for you, I will. Okay, are we ready? Are we ready? Are we ready? <laughs> Hi! <laughs> so this is my hair. It's the next day, so it hasn't quite got its like fresh haircut vibes, but I think I like it. <laughs> I really like the colour. I feel like the colour and like, it's really cool. I, I really like the color. There you go, you can like see it properly if I stand on my tiptoes. The one thing I'm not sure about is the middle part. I decided to try a middle part for like the first time in my entire life. <laughs> and we're not sure. We're all under, we're all, all of my family, we're all a bit, mm, 
dunno. Because the thing is, side parts aren't in. So I feel like I need to have a middle part, but I don't know if I suit it. I have a very round face. So I'm gonna give it a week and I'm gonna see how I feel. I can always switch it back. But anyway, the hair. <laughs> I'm feeling my oats, let me feel my oats. I didn't film in the salad, I was too scared. I don't know these people, maybe next time I would, but I was, I was too scared. <laughs> but I'm very happy with it. I really like the color for summer. I mean, it's summer vibes. I mean, I really like it. Anyways, I finished Library of the Unwritten, finally. It took me quite a while. I'm gonna give it four stars, maybe verging on like a 3.75. For me, this last section, I just wasn't as engaged in it. I feel like the characters began to lose a bit of their like development and sides to them. I feel like you expect a character to kind of grow in development as a book goes on. And I feel like they kind of went backwards. <laughs> I also feel like for a book called The Library of the Unwritten, there's not enough library in this. I mean, I know the whole book is them kind of going on this quest to uh, save this kind of like devil book that's got unleashed. So the whole point is them going to all these places, but I I would have liked more library. I like the library vibes. I'm reading a book about the library, <laughs> but I did really enjoy it. And I feel like now that we've had this first book, the series could grow in my estimations. I really, really liked the first, the first like, section up until when I last spoke to you was probably like a 4 to 4.5. The last bit was probably like a 3, 3.5, so like a 4, perhaps 3.75, but I don't do that. So it's a 4. Um, feels correct. Again, I loved the writing. The LGBTQ rapidness is wonderful. I would recommend this to a lot of people. And yeah, I'm gonna try and like get through the series as quickly as I can. Because not only am I trying to finish a lot of series this year, but I'm trying to like once I start a series, get through it quicker because otherwise series can just like last on my TBR for years. So the second book we're gonna read in this video, we're gonna pick using the Ask the Community tab. So we did this last time and I got one of my favorite books of the year <laughs> so far from it. So I have high hopes. This time I asked for something different. Let's go on the app and I will show you. You go on the homepage to the Ask the Community section here and this is where you can ask for requests. There's loads of different requests, as you can see. My requests this time, sorry, <laughs> I just put up a picture of my uh, my new hair so we might get a few notifications. <laughs> I don't actually love myself this much. I just act like I do. This time I asked for, I would love a recommendation for an LGBT murder mystery. One where the LGBT representation is a major part of the book. So I feel like murder mystery is one of my favorite genres, but I don't often read queer books in that genre, so I wanted to try and do that more. So, let's have a look. I'm gonna scroll to the bottom first and work our way up. Okay, oh, The Dead in the Dark. I don't know if that's a, okay, my, my two, I should, before we get into this, I should give my two rules. I haven't seen what's on here, but a book is prioritized if someone's read it, because there'll be some people here who are recommending books they haven't read. I want it to be like a book they've loved. So it's prioritized. I don't really wanna pick a book that the person hasn't read. And it's definitely prioritized if I own the book, because again, we're trying to get through my TBR. So The Dead in the Dark, Wanda hasn't read it. So I don't think I'm gonna read that. Brianna hasn't read this one. So I don't think I'm gonna read that. Chloe, now, this is a great pick, Dead Dead Girls, does have a sapphic main character relationship in it, but I've read it, <laughs> it's right here. I'm not gonna get it in case it makes the whole book shuffle. I'm sorry for all the notifications that come out, but that is a great recommendation. I would probably, if I was doing this video a week later, I'd probably use this as an excuse to read the sequel to this to like make series progress. The rules don't apply. But the sequel comes out like next week, so I can't read it yet. 1920s, trying to solve a murder filled with queer characters. It's amazing. The boy in the red dress. <gasps> 1929. So that's a murder mystery. It's definitely queer. It looks like we might have a drag queen kind of performer. Oh, that one's exciting. Cemeteries and dead ends. Okay, that's a real contender and Ren's, Ren's read it. Another historical one who is possessed by the something of his murdered best friend and thrust into a deadly hunt for a serial killer. That's a good, that's a good possibility too. Chicago, 1893. This does sound up my vibe as well. Oh, Far From You by Tess Sharp. Okay, that's a murder mystery, a YA. Even though it is YA, Tess Sharp is not afraid to get, explore more mature content and the mystery is really intriguing. Alison, not so much a mystery. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Definitely murdery with ominous, mysterious vibe. Female female relationship. Hmm. Okay. I think it's between Far From You, The City Beautiful, and The Boy in the Red Dress are our contenders. Which one do I feel like I want to read most? 
I'm feeling like the boy in the red dress, you know? I feel like I want to read The Boy in the Red Dress. That one intrigues me. I've never read, it seems to me like we have a drag queen main character and like, or like at least like a kind of drag performer main character and murder. And I like, I love 1920s, set at a speakeasy. Like I feel like in the French Quarter, mm, feel, I feel like this is the one we're gonna read. So I'm gonna go get this one and we're gonna read it. This is what I love about this section. You can, you can discover books that you never knew existed. I find it so hard to find queer murder mysteries and like you guys have served them up to me on a platter. So we're gonna read The Boy in the Red Dress next. So I am halfway through The Boy in the Red Dress. I will say, this reads so fast. <laughs> the I've been written took me a little while to read it, but this one reads really fast. So I have some thoughts. So the basic premise of this, it's set in 1929, 1930s New York. No, not New York. Can't remember where. <laughs> Uh, New Orleans? Yes, New Orleans. And our main character, her aunt, runs a speakeasy and she's put her in charge. Sorry, let me like change the angle a bit. She's put her in charge of running it for New Year's Eve. And unfortunately, a girl gets murdered. Unfortunately. <laughs> Sadly. <laughs> a girl gets murdered and the prime suspect is the boy in the red dress who's our main character's best friend and he's the kind of like the drag performer um, at the bar. And she basically decides to investigate the murder in order to absolve him of any guilt is essentially the plot. And the group that the girl was in is kind of like the rich debutante kind of group in society. Now, the biggest pros of this to me is that this is exactly what I asked for. This is exactly, the recommendation is spot on. I, I, like you literally couldn't have got it any better. They got me, gal. <laughs> <laughs> it is a classic murder mystery in a sense, perhaps a bit more character focused and I feel like a lot of other murder mysteries are, particularly because this is YA, I feel like adult books aren't usually as character focused and interrelationship focused, whereas this is. But you know, it's a murder mystery and the rep in it is great. The main character is bisexual and I, as someone who is bisexual, I very rarely read any representation for that, let alone good representation. And I think the representation is great. You know, she speaks about being attracted. There's like particularly a boy character and a girl character she's really attracted to. And she's never like, well, I'm bisexual. She just like, without thought talks about, without kind of ceremony talks about her attraction to both of them. And there's so much rep in this. Obviously we've got, I would say trans rep in a way. Marion is the boy in the red dress. He uses, he, him pronouns in the book, but obviously it's set at a time when, you know, <laughs> I don't know how easy it would have been to use she, her pronouns. Um, obviously he's adopted the name Marion instead of his previous dead name. So yeah, like it's, I think it's like gender representation in some sense, I guess we could say. I think it's a good beginner's murder mystery for like a YA audience. So like the representation in it is great. It's a good simple murder mystery, but like the writing is just like fine. Like it, it's not doing much for me. Like it's a quick read, but I'm not feeling much. I'm kind of just like ready to read it fast. And then I've read another book. It's probably like a 3.5 at the moment, not cause it's bad, there's nothing really bad about it. It's just not doing much for me. The main character is kind of like, <laughs> she keeps going and like following one of this kind of the group of friends of the girl who was murdered, like around to their like place of work or a place they're known to frequent and kind of like semi blackmailing them or threatening them to do what she wants. She like acts really tough. She's like, if you don't give me information, who knows? I could scream or whatever. Like, I, it's very strange. It's like strange tactics. <laughs> but yeah, I think the representation is great. And it is a LGBT murder mystery, particularly where identities form a big part of it. So it's exactly what I asked for. So the community, ask community section was spot on. But just in terms of enjoyment, I don't think it's going to be a 
brand new favorite. I think if you enjoy The Diviners, I think because it's set in the 1920s, we go to bars a lot in The Diviners and it's got a very good group of friends in this. I think it's kind of like that without the fantasy in a way. That's kind of what it reminds me of. So yeah, I'm just gonna go finish the other half. I don't think, I think it'll take me like an hour, two hours maybe. And I will let you know later what my thoughts are but yeah it's just like fine it's good but it's not like blowing my socks off you know i finished the boy in the red dress last night and i'm gonna give it a 3.5 overall you've been very very harsh nice to meet you kelly harsh i think it's like fine <laughs> I actually found out this is a debut. This is the only book I think this author has. And I think it's a really good YA murder mystery debut. And I think it's, like I said, a great introduction to murder mystery. If you're someone, I think for like a younger audience who typically only reads YA, is used to having really good like groups of friends and like, you know, hijinks, but like through a murder mystery lens, I think it's a great introduction because it's like introducing you to red herrings and like, kind of detective skills and stuff. So I think in, in that regard, it's it's a good book. I just didn't, it didn't like do anything for me. Like I had a fun, quick read. I read it in a day, do you know what I mean? It helped me try and catch up on my Goodreads goal, which is a mess. <coughs> <coughs> I'm allergic to thinking about my Goodreads goal. What I think is great, and what is great for the recommendation request is the whole book is queer. The whole book is gay. You know, you're a bisexual main character, you have a drag performer, you have lesbians, you have like, listen, it's like, you know, the whole cast is full of representation. The recommendation request, you guys found exactly what I wanted. If you haven't downloaded Novelic, go download it and try, put a request in the community section. Last time I did this, loads of you did it and everyone was answering each other and it was just so much fun. So I think it's a great place to go and find recommendations for kind of niche stuff that you can't Google. This is what I said last time, right? Like, even if I Google like LGBT murder mystery, I wouldn't find stuff that like our audience, our group, our friends, you know, the kind of community that we have on here, we all know that each other would like. Do you know what I mean? So I think it's really useful to view it through that lens. And there's things like, I want a book like this, I want a book like that, that you can't Google and you kind of need someone to recommend to you. So I just think it's such a wonderful place for that. It's like my favorite part of the app. I think it's genius. <laughs> I think you should all download it and go give that part a go. The link is always in my bio in these videos to so go download the, the app. I also just wanted to say that obviously I've been running the book club for Library of the Unwritten and it's coming to an end and I've just had so much fun doing that as well. We've had some really good discussions. It's been different because obviously last time we reread or I reread one of my favourite books but this has been new for me and when we were having discussions particularly at the halfway point people were saying things like thematic ideas or realising things that I hadn't realised and hadn't thought of and I just think it was so much fun. So you can go start your own book club on there if you want. You can make one with friends. You can make private or public ones. You can like make one with a small group of friends and make it private. Maybe if you have like a community on Bookstagram or Book Twitter, whatever, you could create a little book club together or you can make a public one and try and build it up. I think it's really, really great and we've had some great discussions on there. Novelic is such a fun app. I think there's so much fun to explore. There's so many fun ways to pick your TBR from there. If you kind of want to like build your TBR in a fun way like booktubers do. I think there's so many different avenues to do that. They have even this Pride Month um, section, the banner on the app at the moment, where there's like even more Pride Month recommendations. I was gonna pick, if I were to read three books in this video, I was gonna pick one from there, but I think the video would have been too long. But there's like 12 recommendations on there and there's something for everyone, like a, you know, non-fiction, YA, fantasy, like there's literally something for everyone on there. So I just think there's so much to go and explore on Novelix. So I would 100% recommend you go check out the link in my bio, go check out the app, make sure you use the link in my bio because then they know I sent you. <laughs> Don't just search it on the app store. But yeah, I would really recommend it. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. We read two pretty good books. Do you know what I mean? Library of the Written was a five star prediction for me. So a little bit disappointed, but I feel like I know that the second and third books could be five stars still. It still has that possibility. So it wasn't a failure. <laughs> we still had pretty good luck. If you got into the end of the video, comment. There's a rainbow flag emoji, right? I'm not making that up. Comment the rainbow flag emoji if you got into the end. So thank you so much for watching this video. I really, really hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you very soon in another video. Bye.